Hey friends, here is some good news about animals that will make your day. Number six. Since peaking almost a decade ago, poaching of African elephants across the continent has been on a steady decline. The cause of the good news is due to both collaborative conservation efforts throughout Africa and a reduction in the demand of ivory in Asia. One of the biggest game changers is that in early 2018, China banned the sale of ivory, the material that makes up the elephant's tusks. We're beginning to see the positive effects as the African elephant population is leveling off. And with any luck, these amazing animals will be ones that we'll never forget. Number five. According to the results of the Barunga Mountain Gorilla Census, the population of the mountain gorillas in Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo is on the rise. Just the fact that we're doing a census on gorillas makes me happy. Back in 1989, the mountain gorilla population was at an all time low of 620. The situation was dire and had been exacerbated by illegal logging, disease, and poaching. The mountain gorilla is the only non-human primate in the world who has a growing population and the research shows that the increase is due to the devoted protection of the gorillas by authorities. The current total is almost 900 individual gorillas across the three countries. Continued protection is necessary, but this news is a great step in the right direction. Number four. Unfortunately, Sudan, the last male northern white rhino, passed away in 2018. But this is a video about happy news, and just months after Sudan's passing, scientists successfully grew embryos containing his DNA. There are two females of the species left, and the goal is to establish a pregnancy using them as surrogate mothers. By fertilizing these mothers several times, the team of scientists hopes to bolster the fledgling population. Let's hope those new young rhinos are horn. Number three. Puffins hate muffins. I'm just kidding. They hate rats. And this isn't some senseless grudge. They hate them for good reason. Lundy Island, off the southwest coast of the UK, had a rat problem that would make even Peter Pettigrew cringe. Anyone? Peter Pettigrew? Ah. The rats showed up sometime in the 20th century by hitching a ride on merchant ships, and they weren't exactly gracious house guests. They'd eat puffin children and puffin eggs. Bad form, rats! According to Alex Bond, senior curator in charge of birds at the Natural History Museum, quote, Seabirds evolved to breed in places without predators, so when species like rats or mice are introduced to an island, the birds just don't have the behavioral tools to respond. The Atlantic puffin is classified as vulnerable to extinction, and Lundy Island was an important breeding ground. But thanks to a huge conservation project, the invasive rodents are no more, and there is an unprecedented resurgence of Atlantic puffins. Number two, a female anaconda in Boston's New England Aquarium gave birth to babies on her own without the involvement of a male. Well, that's it, boys. We're obsolete. Pack it in. It was a good run. The anaconda's name is Anna. Anna, the anaconda. <laughs> I see you, Boston Aquarium. You funny. Aquarium staff had no idea that Anna was even pregnant until she gave birth to 18 snakes. By the way, fun fact, anacondas, no eggs, live births. Ugh. What's bananas is that all of these babies were exact clones of Anna. Their DNA matched 100% to their mother. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notified of new videos and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number one, University of Sydney researcher Valentina Mella has begun setting up spas for koalas on Australia's east coast. Koalas are the best, but they've been struggling lately. It's been extra hot and extra dry in Australia over the last few years, and Mella and her colleagues have decided to set up koala tap rooms for the parched marsupials. Apparently lemurs are also getting in on the fun. These artificial watering holes are all the rage for Australia's wildlife. They've been providing much needed H2O during the hot summer months. They're placed in trees so that arboreal animals can get access while excluding terrestrial predators. 